the Dauntless. Why did you tell them it was untested? Admiral Cistern asks Major Payne, who grins. I wanted our boys to feel the danger, sir. Without that, there would be less authenticity in their actions and reactions. With the possibility, even if never spoken nor openly considered that the holograms might be able to hurt them, they would do their very best. A four-year-old with a pugil stick was more dangerous and we still saw what they did. Yes, they obeyed one of the most important laws of battle and stayed in cover. They come up with snap decisions that were effective and the moment you reminded them they were crowding an area too much they fanned out. Admiral Cistern notes, anything of note beyond standout performances. If we keep doing things this way, sir, then I'm going to have a hard time remembering names we're going to pump out soldiers so damn fast, Major Payne states, and Admiral Cistern smiles. Good. No doubt a few of them will make decent drill instructors in a few years as well, so I advise you not to make things too personal with them. After all, they will be co-workers soon enough. Sir, if you don't think I can handle a few barrack squabbles, then you should have left me back on Earth, Major Payne says and Admiral Cistern grins. Fair enough now. Thank you, Philip. Uh, private stream? Admiral Cistern notes as a steaming cup of coffee is placed next to him. He has to cut himself off as he notices that it's not the subtly youthening hand of Sir Philip, but rather the very young hand of Herbert Jameson, or in this case, private stream. Well, looks like the little bitty man is out and about. What's the matter? Grandpa got diaper rash, Major Payne asks, and Private Stream just snorts in amusement. Do you have an issue with Sir Philip or Private Stream Major, Admiral Cistern asks. Only in that both of you should have done something. One's too small, the other too old. That either of them survived the training is nothing short of clerical error, Major Payne notes. There are extenuating circumstances, Major Payne, both are very competent soldiers and more than capable on the field of battle. It's about more than that, sir. We're getting downright octogenarians and borderline babies signing up to join us. Healing comas or not, it's a problem. If they're too old and set in their ways to train, then there's nothing I can do with any amount of ass beatings. They're not going to learn if they always think they know better and if they're twice my age at a casual glance and 20 times in for real, then they're not going to respect me, Major Payne explains before throwing Private Stream a dirty look. And it's complete morale and PR poison to have kiddies on the battlefield. What kind of message are we sending if our soldiers get their bloodlust from fucking diaper rash, Major Payne demands. I thought it was an open secret at this point. Admiral Sister notes with some admiration. Surprisingly, it's still an actual secret, sir. Private Stream answers in his usual chipper tone. Major Payne, allow me to introduce Special Agent Herbert Jameson in his persona of Private Stream, the overeager cadet. Thanks to an overdone healing coma, he's 30 going on 14 and a half. He's one of our top intelligence agents and has ingratiated us with several political entities and extremely powerful individuals. He's one of Sir Philip's personal students. Sir Philip, the British super spy from a novel. The British spy whose personal biography reads like a thriller series. I can personally verify one of his later missions as I was a lower ranking officer who helped him with his extraction at the time, Admiral Cistern says and gets a strange look from Major Payne. Sir, do you mean to tell me that there was a mass driver super weapon in orbit and ain't no news network reported on it? No but there was a plan to destabilize the orbit of several satellites so they would collide and rain down on a capital city to hold an entire country to ransom. I helped set up the extraction for after Sir Philip planted a virus that caused the calculations to be off by just enough that all the satellites missed each other. That's vaguely terrifying, sir. Yes, yes, it is. There's a reason no government agency wants to admit all the things that happened when Sir Philip's biography was released. Admiral Cistern notes. And the boy? I'm small enough, 5'11", 
fast enough and innocent looking enough that I can go just about anywhere and the biggest risk is pedophiles or some random woman deciding to adopt me, Private Stream says, placing a coffee in front of Major Payne. Adoption? Worse than the pedophiles. No one minds if I string up a kitty diddler, but a well-intentioned and civically-minded woman doing everything she can to help some poor little boy is a lot harder to get away from. Private Stream explains and gets a sharp cackle from Major Payne. I watched that training exercise. I think we might have a saboteur in the making with Recruit Hart. If we can teach him a bit of subtlety, then I may be poaching him for intelligence. There's a lot that can be accomplished by a big bang at the right place and time, Agent Jameson says. He's still wearing the Private Stream outfit, but it's clear he's not in the persona anymore. Very good. Anything else you observed, Private Stream? Admiral Cistern asks. Sir. No, sir. Sir. He replies fully back into the Private Stream persona, and Major Payne nearly snorts into his coffee at that lightning-fast shift. Then the little guy is gone, and it's just the two of them in the office. Well, ain't he just the slickest little thing on the block? He's going to have to be. Sir Philip received additional orders from home. He won't give me details, but he's fully coming out of retirement and planning. Something. What thing? I'm not certain. He's been researching numerous worlds from all areas of space. For all I know, he could be planning conquest. Admiral Cistern says, knowing full well that he's planning something big and conquest is certainly on the possible menu. Now don't be absurd, sir. I'm only one man, Sir Philip says as he suddenly puts down a platter of cookies for both men to enjoy. He then walks behind Admiral Cistern and makes no attempt to hide the fact that he outright vanishes. Old man's playing with us, Major Payne notes. He isn't causing problems and he's refining his skills. He also weren't as old as he looked. No, he's maintaining his outward age well, but he's clearly growing younger. Admiral Cistern notes. I may not be in the full no, but I know the vague pattern he's after. Well, sir, it appears that some of my earlier complaints must be respectfully retracted. Major Payne notes as he sips his coffee. Is there anything else of note? Those three recruits, Valiance, Gellin, and Davies, what are their intended career trajectories? Recruit Valiance is heading his tiny blue behind into infantry. He wants to fight. Recruit Gellin is looking to make herself a quartermaster. And Recruit Davies wants to rest his pincers in communications. A good spread of talents for commanding officers, sir. I'm glad to hear it. Now... Admiral Cistern is cut off when his desktop communicator goes off. Admiral Cistern here. Sir, we have a fairly interesting report from Level 8 of Project Phoenix Fire. Copy that. I'll be down when I finish my current meeting. Project Phoenix Fire, sir? Major Payne asks. Urban renewal strategies. Level 8 is a bit more sensitive than the other 9, though. I understand, sir. As there will likely be a gap in my upcoming schedule, is there anything I can do to assist? Perhaps armed escort for the replanting of the Level 10 project. Community parks in the slums. They've been torn up and replaced with narcotic farms. Admiral Cistern notes. I look forward to it, sir. Some simple, honest labor and the chance for some fun and action sounds wonderful. Major Payne remarks. Excellent. Now please, give me the full details on way to improve our training program. The more refined we can make this, the more we'll become a proper power out in the galaxy. Stitching when you have big, chunky pincers instead of delicate little hands is a tricky affair. If not for Axiom use, it would be nigh on impossible. But with his new rank chevrons on his uniform jacket, he can finally start taking in the full new responsibilities he had been saddled with. He hadn't gone looking for even more responsibility than what he signed up for. But he did sign up to do more than he thought he ever could, so no doubt this will be part of it. He didn't think of himself as a leader, but apparently it was time to learn otherwise. Hey, we have a couple hours of time off before lights out. You want to come with Sergeant? Cobalt asks, 
and Skye turns to look at the blue furred little guy. Sure, why not? I could use some R and R. He notes to himself as he stands up and pockets the little book that he's going to have to memorize. He has fire watch duty tonight anyway, so he'll read it then. He'll have to be extra careful during that though, really listen for anything weird. The experienced soldiers on the ship had horror story after horror story about the things drill instructors would do if they caught you sleeping during fire watch. The crowd finds itself out of the dauntless and quickly in some of the buildings that have been rented for the use of the undaunted. The sounds of a party are already in swing and there's a clear division in things in the massive combination of food court, arcade, dance hall, and bar. Well, in the food court at least. There's a sectioned off area that's full to the point there's a lineup for it. It's where the humans and other intestinally strong soldiers eat. If not for the divider, then the fumes of whatever the hell those men are eating might be enough to give another soldier the runs. Then he hears it, a series of snaps and clicks from the pincers of another of his kind. He looks around and then sighs. Something wrong? Cobalt asks even as he uses the axiom from his horn to levitate a drink he just bought. Family drama, excuse me, he says before heading off. The Andinus is dressed casually and for it, blending in. This isn't a place where pretense tends to last. At the table, there are a pair of drinks. Galara, a favorite among his family. Hell, it had been his favorite for a long time. Can we talk skyward bound? Deliberate thought asks gently. He nods before sitting opposite of her. His father's first wife never acted in haste and always played the peacekeeper, but only when she understood a situation. You look like you've had quite the day. I have, he says tersely, and she sighs. I'm not your enemy skyward, you know that, she says gently. Do I? He asks, and she gives him a very unimpressed look. You're not stupid, young man. Don't act like you are. The way your mother and older sister acted was regrettable. Stupid, he corrects. I'm trying to be diplomatic. Trying to assuage the feelings of people that aren't even here just makes this seem slimy and underpincered, he says. And you already have your backup and are looking for a fight. Is it any wonder that I and many others are concerned? She turns it back on him. Give me a chance to talk at least, okay? He gestures with his tail that she should go ahead and picks up his drink to sip it, keeps his mouth occupied and lowers the chances of being rude. Your mother and full sisters are the fussy, worrier types. You know this. You know that they overreact when things don't go exactly their way and this is not a mystery to you at all. True, he says, pulling away the drink for a moment. So, I'm here to make sure there isn't any bad blood. Your sister and mother ran their mouths and learned very quickly that you're done being pushed around. Fine. Great even. They're still your mother and sister. I'm still your other mother and my daughters are still your siblings. Don't shut us out because two people did something stupid. I haven't shut anyone out. I'm focusing on my training. I've had a 10-hour workday. I'm running on axiom and fumes and I still have more to do. I'm first fire watch tonight, so... Even though I'm tired enough that my pincers feel like they're made of hypercrete, I still can't go to bed for a while yet. I'm not trying to snub our family. I'm trying to be better. That's a relief. You know how fast and loose our family miscommunicates, so I needed to be sure things were all right on your end, she says. How bad is it? Some are saying that you've renounced being one of us. Others are saying that you're plotting revenge. You know how goofy the rumors can get. We're a big family, and if you, our only son, so much as coughs, you get a lot of attention. Oh, I know. Believe me, I know. So what have you been up to? Just training. Lots of training. And what are you planning for your military career? Communications officer. It's something completely natural to do and opens a lot of further doors. Which ones will I go through? I'm not sure right now but I've got a good first step in my mind and it will take me to exotic places and meeting new people and shooting them, 
deliberate thought asks. Possibly. Skyward Bound replies with a big grin that's met with some low giggles.